Hello. Okay, hello. Now I'm recording. So, first I want to apologize for the late post. Uh, I've been uh, dealing with a lot of different situations, so I haven't been able to really be myself lately. But um, I was able to get some things done. So, after watching the videos on differentiated instruction and um, those different social studies lessons, I took away a lot. Well, first of all, I've been teaching for uh, several years, so I know a little bit about differentiated instruction. Um, I've done um, several um, professional developments on how to incorporate all the different learning styles into your teaching. So differentiated learning, I feel like first is really, really important if you want to reach all your students. One of my um, um, philosophies in education is that all students can learn. Well, that can't be true unless you differentiate the learning. If you don't differentiate the learning, then no, all students won't learn because everyone don't learn the same. And I use myself as an example. If I'm in a lecture and you're sitting there talking to me, I'm probably nine times out of ten going to fall asleep or find myself doodling on some paper or, you know, my mind is focused somewhere else. Um, I can't just sit there and be lectured to for a long period of time. And I take that in consideration when I'm when I'm teaching a lesson. So social studies is one of those uh, subjects that, you know, you can find yourself um, lecturing for a long period of time. And you'll see students will get bored. They'll just start nodding off. They'll, they'll start doing other stuff. And then and, and that's when all the behavior problems and behavior issues kick in because they'd rather be doing something different. They'd rather be either working with their hands, um, creating something. So that's when differentiated learning comes into place. And um, I, too, was fond, very fond of the first video where she talks about... Um, the visual learners, the kinesthetic, and the audios, and she used those three main, those are the three main um, learning types that I use as well. Uh, for the most part, the kids um, love doing, they love doing something. So, you know, it's not like math or science where they're automatically working with their hands and doing something. Social studies is more, well, when I was in school, you, you sit there and you listen to the teacher tell you about what, 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 what happened in the past. It's not like that anymore. You know, it's just so many different ways that you can do things. So I'm a fan of putting the students in groups and, um, you know, you got a recorder, you got the, the person that's going to be the speaker, you got a person that's going to um, actually um, work with their hands. Everyone in the group has a certain job to get to the same um, what do you want to say? The same um, objective. So everybody has that same objective in mind, but we're going to get there a little bit different. So maybe there's a student, somebody who likes to talk a lot. Well, they will be that spokesperson for that group, you know. Um, and with social studies, and the other thing that I like is the um, the book that we're reading. Well, the book that I, I, I chose to read. It's a great tool to use in social studies because not only is it talking about <clears throat> life um, before they knew it. That's what I say. When I say they, I mean the students. Life before they knew it, that's all social studies. That's all history. That's all part of, you know, um, what we have to do in, in life or whatever. So to bring it to them in an exciting way, that novel, that book, uh, the historical fiction book, is absolutely great. Um, I'm thinking of all different types of lessons that we can use. Um, and you differentiate the lessons. You can have them draw a picture. You can have them write a song. You can have them um, um, retell the ending, or, or you know, um, they can read it to each other. There's a whole, there's a, a, a abundance of things that you can do to differentiate the learning to make sure that you reach all of your students' needs. Um, I feel it's very important so that they won't, you know, just be sitting there because that's what I would do <laughs> when I was a student and, and you know even as an adult right now when I go to um sorry to say this but seriously when I go to like professional developments and um the staff were sitting there and if someone's just sitting there the whole time talking to us my mind is somewhere else it, it, it just is um so I take that in consideration when I'm teaching um I have to make sure that I can reach all of these 
all of my students, all of them. So therefore, I, I build on their strengths. So I build on what I know they can do, what I know they, they like to do, what I know they, they uh, are capable of doing. And you take those and you put those in your lessons to differentiate learning. Um, whereas me just standing there talking is just not going to work. Um, so I, I, I really strongly believe in differentiating the learning mm -hmm. in all subjects, not just social studies. So, you know, I think it's going to be really cool. And I'm, I'm already creating some lesson plans and some things, um, uh, for the book that I'm reading, um, for this class. So I'm creating some lesson plans that have, you know, some, um, you'll see different, different, differentiated instructions, um, in there. Um, so yeah, I think it's very important and, um, I'm a little excited about what I create. Thank you.